Hello and welcome back to Lord Fat Gaming Plays Near Winter Nights 2. I'm your host, Lord Fat. In this Near Winter Nights 2 video guide, we're going to go over all the prestige classes. Every single one of them. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Do not forget to hit the notification bell so be update and more. Now, what's in this video guide exactly? First of all, I'll be talking about the requirements. That's the most important thing. I'll uh, talk about suggestions on what uh, base class you want or base classes you want to uh, do too. The uh, skills in it and also uh, combat plus some advice too. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, level adjustment races. Now, really quick about the level adjustment races in the uh, prestige classes. Well, guess what? It's the exact same thing as the base classes. So definitely keep your mind on the strength and weaknesses when you decide to go this path. And they will uh, take about one to three times longer than they uh, should to their other uh, counterparts. Like, for example, the human. Now, as for uh, levels, well, a level uh, one drought equals to a level three human. So keep that in mind, too, for ECL. So let's go ahead and begin on the first prestige class. Here are the requirements in order to become an arcane archer. You got to be an elves or half elf. You could be a drow, sun elf, or half drow. Those are all fine, too. Base attack plus six. Yeah, that's right. You gotta have uh, that at least. Here's the feats you need. Point blank shot. Weapon focus long bow or weapon focus short bow. Spell casting. Level one in the arcane. So you gotta be a sorcerer or uh, at least a wizard at least. Mostly elves and half elf races are fine. Rangers are your best bet for one pairing. And the other pairing, any arcane classes that you feel comfortable with. Dex should be your top stat. Yeah, that's right. Dexterity should be number one. And then uh, anything else you want to prioritize when you love, go ahead. Uh, they get us craft alchemy, weapons, hide, move silently. Let me see what else is uh, there as soon as I'm uh, done. Spot and survival. Next is combat demonstration. Now, arcane archers are great range DPS with a little bit of pizzazz in their arrows that could really do some serious damage. So if you want to think you want to put some magic DPS in those arrows, or just a little bit of kick of DPS as an archer. Well, guess what? This is a good build to uh, do. Just make sure you have your tank uh, go ahead to distract and you just shoot from a far distance safely. So let's get to the next prestige class. Next up is the Arcane Scholar of Candlekeep. Here are the requirements. You gotta have Spellcraft in rank 8. Feats you must have is including in power spell feat, skill focus concentration, and skill focus spellcraft. And you must be able to cast any third level arcane spells, either wizard or sorcerer. And if you have both of them, well, you have to pick one or the other for the best way to uh, go. Now, wizards and sorcerers are obviously your best choice for this. Let, let's be honest here. And if you're a wizard, focus on intelligence. Otherwise, sorcerer, focus on charisma. Now, you get some really powerful... Uh, Feats that's improved like quickening, maximize, and empower, which is a really nice thing for this uh, prestige class if you want to definitely uh, use those more often than uh, not. The following skills that they do get is appraisal, concentration, craft alchemy, diplomacy, lore, search, and spellcraft onto the combat portion. As always, just like a sorcerer or wizard, buff up before uh, going to combat. Use whatever uh, spells in either one of those classes you feel good in. So when you get into combat, have a uh, tank, uh, of course, a strike or a pet bear yet if you have one of those. And then uh, simply uh, go crazy. I don't have a pet, but still, I'm just going to show you how powerful is those uh, quickening and uh, maximized spells are. Or empower, depending on the ones I am definitely using. Use those uh, feats like crazy if you have them automatic. Well, then just cast like regularly. Other than that, it's a pretty decent uh, prestige class for uh, if you want a little bit more out of your uh, spell catching in uh, one degree or uh, two. So let's get to the next prestige class. Now, next up is the Arcane Trickster. Requirements is non-lawful alignment, lore, disabled devices, and tumble at seven, spellcraft four, able to cast third level arcane spells, 2D sneak attacks, and assassin uh, sneak attack does not count. So yeah good ideal uh to not to go that route with the assassin now arcane tricksters get sneak attack then impromptu sneak attack which you could do sneak attacks on the spot then they get pill for magic it's like a lesser dispel it takes out the best uh, buff and then uh, if it works then the uh, arcane trickster gets a uh, bonus in attacks and saves so let's talk about the next part now here's the uh, thing right now is the uh, best way to uh, go is have your wizard 
you know, with enough nip to cast arcane spell level three or enough charisma if you're a sorcerer. Uh, best combination is rogue plus wizard or rogue plus sorcerer. Focus on dex. Now here are the skills that the arcane tricksters can have that is not cross class. And here we go. Now the uh, skills that they have is appraisal, bluff, concentration, craft alchemy, craft traps, craft weapons, diplomacy, disable devices, hide, listen, lore, move silently, open locks, parry, search, set traps, slay a hand, spell craft, spot, taunt, and tumble. Now on to the combat demonstration of the video. Now, uh, as always, buff up if you do not have the still spell feat. Unequip your armor, buff up, and then uh, go in. And my advice is send your tank, tank in as always first. So uh, at this point, treat, your, treat it like if you're a rogue. That's uh, one advice I'll definitely give you all. Now, another uh, combination I didn't say was a rogue plus uh, shadow dancer, which is only in one level for the high in plain sight. And then uh, wizard or sorcerer depends on what if you want to go either one of those routes. So go ahead, sneak attack, impromptu sneak attack. And if some uh, big baddie has a nice buff, go ahead and steal it. So this way you get a boost in attack power and more. Other than that, act like a rogue at this point. And no, magic does not sneak attack, unfortunately. That's another game that does that. This game does not. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the next prestige class. Now, next up is the assassin. You got to be evil. That's it, period. No other alignment. So chaotic, neutral, or lawful evil. Eight in hide and eight in move silently. Once that happens, you're an assassin. So best combination of uh, classes is a rogue and shadow dancer, obviously. So this is where you get that much earlier uh, high in plain sight. Yes, assassins do get it, but I like to uh, get that a bit earlier than intended to. Now, uh, any race with high dexterity is the uh, best. Dexterity is the way to go. Now, the assassin has a death attack, which uh, paralyzes foes if they don't make a save. Other than that, they get invisibilities. They get dodge moves. Later on, the leveling of an assassin, they get high in plain sight if you don't want to do a shadow dancer. Now, the best uh, skills I'll probably say is hide, move silently, and tumble. Now, if you want to set traps, that's fine. You want to disable traps again, then you set them. That's uh, good, too. As for uh, feats, uh, go ahead and just get the feats that you uh, get as a rogue. So, let's do the combat portion of the video. Now, with the assassin dodge uh, feats and also uh, the invisibility uh, spells that they cast, well, buff those up before going to combat. Uh, send your tank in or anybody else to distract, then you go in and just assassinate them. Uh, abuse that high in plain sight, in other words, stealth in, stealth out. Yeah, go ahead and uh, sneak attack, and if you could uh, paralyze a few foes, especially in those uh, healers or casters, well, you're uh, golden. So treat this exactly like a rogue, but be more vicious. So let's get to the next prestige class. Now, next up is the Black Guard. You gotta be evil. That's it, everyone. Uh, hide in five ranks, definitely on that. Base attack bonus plus six, you must have that. Now, feats, power attack, and cleave. And then after that, you're a black guard. You uh, do get some spells to cast, some summons, like for example, undead and finish uh, creatures that will actually help you. You also uh, get some buffs like bull strength. You get dark blessing that uh, your charisma goes into your save throws. Aurora Despairs does his uh, debuffs your foes. Yeah, that's right. You get all sorts of dirty tricks and sneak attack, too. Yeah, this is an evil class. Best way to go, I'll probably say, is the uh, melee classes. And then uh, strength is your top priority. You could do a charisma build for smiting. Or I should say smite good, but... Yeah, there's only very few situations you actually will uh, do that. So, as for the skills, you get is... Uh, let's see here. Concentration, craft armor, craft traps, craft weapons... Uh, let's see here. Diplomacy, I believe. Hide. Heal. Move silently. All those. Yeah. And then uh, Intimidate. Yeah, that's another good one, too, for all uh, black guards. There's a few more skills there, too. Other than that, let's demonstrate the combat. Now, for uh, combat, yeah, just treat this normally like a fire set with a few exceptions. If you get a chance to uh, do some sneak attacks, go ahead and uh, do so. Now, facing against uh, good guys or good gals, go ahead and smite good. Yeah, I normally would say do a smite good build, but there's only very few moments in the uh, Neverwinter Night campaigns that actually allows you to uh, do that, unfortunately. But still, this is a great prestige class if you want to go evil and you want to be a melee fighter. And that's about does it. Let's get to the next one. Now, next up is the Divine Champion. It's like the Champion of Torm prestige class from Neverwinter Nights. Minus the restrictions. So here's the requirements. Base attack bonus plus seven. 
Any weapon focused feet, yeah, just one of those will do fine. My advice is any frontline fire class, like for example, fire, if you want to add some paladin abilities to it, go ahead and do so. And uh, of course, uh, my advice for uh, stats is strength for pure melee power. If you want to do a charisma bill for smiting, yeah, paladin plus divine champion is the way to go. They get sacred defenses that adds their save throws. Divine wrath, that gets a nice buff. They also could uh, lay on hands. And, of course, smite infidel, depending on their alignment. So, if you're uh, evil, then you smite good. Otherwise, if you're good, you smite evil neutral. You just pick which one you want to uh, do. And you, they do get bonus feats, too. And now, next up, I'm going to go ahead and do these skills after I uh, quickly go ahead and hit this there. Yeah, I'm building a charisma build there. There you go. The following skills are not cross-class. is craft armor, craft weapons parry and lore so let's get the combat portion of this video now for the divine champion in combat that rolls like a tank so yeah you're a frontline fighter so if you're doing a smite build so go ahead and just smite foes yeah cast that uh we call it divine wrath yeah if you do that you'll really tear foes up definitely uh, focus on your charisma gear like for example if you get one and eight then focus on another piece of gear like for example strength and if you want to, Dexterity, Constitution, Will, and of course, uh, Wisdom for those saves too. And also with Sacred Defense, if you have all 10 levels, yeah, it helps you out on save throws, which is good. And also invest in Power Attack, Cleave, and of course, Great Cleave. You really cleave up foes. And it's not bad uh, against Undead too. So if you have Lay on Hands, go ahead and use that as a nuke too against certain Undead too. Or just say like all Undead. That's a good one too. Other than that, just uh, do uh, frontline fighting and you're set. So let's uh, go ahead and do the next prestige class. Next up is the Doom Guide. This is a prestige class. The requirements are as follows. Alignment must be lawful only. Diplomacy at five. You must have the following two feats, extra turning and great fortitude. You must be in third level divine spell casting only. Kelvamore will be your deity upon uh, accepting this uh, prestige class. So that's a warning, though, if you don't like this uh, god in the game. Now, I'll probably say his best uh, classes are the Paladin and Cleric. Those are two ways to go. You could do a Druid or Ranger, but not really. Uh, if you're a Cleric, keep on, on that Wisdom path because you will uh, still gain the uh, Cleric spells. Now, Paladin, I say 14 Wisdom and stop there. They stop at casting level 4 on that. Other than that, the uh, Doom Guide will improve your uh, turn undead, give you a lot more power in that. You'll eventually will be immune to uh, death magic and, of course, uh, uh, energy drain stuff like level drain. Also, uh, they do uh, gain a boon on their weapons, too, which is very uh, all right. Eternal Purge, too, which is uh, fine. And, of course, I said about the uh, spell levels, too. You keep on continuing that path. And if you are more in the, in the casting part, yeah, Clerk's the way to uh, go. Other than that, that's about it for this uh, prestige class. They gain concentration, alchemy, craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, and let me uh, see here, lore, and of course, spell uh, craft. That's about it. Let's uh, demonstrate against the undead in this uh, portion of the video. Now, your turn undead will be heavily enhanced thanks to uh, this prestige class, especially. If you're on the cleric and just uh, ear play like a normal cleric or a normal paladin, you'll destroy the undead. Now, the uh, downside to all this is this prestige class is specialized against the undead. Unfortunately, anything against the living is not going to be that much effective. So, just uh, look for campaigns. If you're facing, like I say, 75% undead, this will be perfect. Otherwise, I'd probably say skip this one. So, let's get to the uh, next prestige class. Now, next up is the Duelist Prestige class. So, here are the requirements. Base attack bonus 6. You gotta have that. Parry 5 and tumble 5. Feats you uh, want to get is dodge, mobility, and weapon finesse. Once you get all those, you're a Duelist. Now, my advice is uh, very simple. Any race with intelligence and dex that's really up there. For example, the Drow are uh, great Duelists. Uh, dexterity should be tops. Get that init up there for the uh, armor bonuses uh, too. Swashbucklers. Are the best class other classes work fine too now what they do uh, get is uh, besides some defensive feats is precision strike which is uh, nice canny defense that adds intelligence to AC bonus and you gotta be cloth basically that's the downside 
upside some of the other stuff too. And as for uh, skills, let me uh, get the list. Uh, bluff, craft weapons, listen, parry, spot, taunt, and uh, tumble. And that should uh, definitely do it for uh, this section. Let's get to the combat portion of the video. Besides the defensive feats that the duelist has, while they also have that nice, I'm going to say again, canny defense if you have high intelligence, along with some uh, dexterity there for uh, weapon damage thanks to uh, finesse if you have a finesse weapon. And I'm going to say precise uh, strike is really good if you have one weapon in your hand. No shield, no offhanded weapon. And uh, you start out getting 1d6 pierce damage extra. Then you uh, at 10 get to uh, 2d6, which is uh, very nice. It's also applied automatically, which is a good thing. So I felt like uh, the swashbuckler is the best combination. You could do other classes too. I'm going to probably say is if you have no tank, you're the tank. If there's a tank, let the tank go in. Then you go in just to wreck everything up. So the duelist is a great prestige class to uh, play. So let's get to the next one. Next prestige class is the Dwarven Defender. You must be a dwarf, obviously. Any three will uh, do. Yeah, like this gray dwarf on the screen. Alignment, any lawful. That's right. Those uh, three you have to pick from. Base attack bonus plus seven. And then after that, feats, dodge, and toughness. Once you do that, you're a Dwarven Defender. My advice is fires are the very best. Other classes can work too. Focus on strength. And if you any uh, play any uh, Dwarven races, yeah. They have got good enough uh, stats for uh, those. They do get a defensive stance, which uh, boosts up their uh, stats and their AC. Now, if they move, they lose it, but they can apply it again. They have uh, dodge feats and damage reduction. Now, I'm going to say that the Dwarven Defender are one of the uh, great prestige classes that can actually tank. There's another one coming up, too, that's uh, very good as well. So, uh, I'm going to probably say that for the next part of the video is the skills. You get craft armor, craft weapons, uh, parry, and spot. That's about it, but still that's uh, good enough. Other than that, it is time to demonstrate them into combat. Now, as a Dwarven Defender, you're a tank. You're a frontline fighter. You take all the damage because some of the defensive feats that they have, they can really protect themselves well. They also do some damage too if you know what you're uh, doing. Like I said, four fighters is the uh, best way to go to the fact they have so many feats. You could just build them a lot quicker and also uh, get some nice uh, weapon feats out of it uh, too. So, yeah, the armor class is really up there too. That's really good. Other than that, if you like tank and you like a dwarf, this is a perfect combination for you. So let's get to the next prestige class. Now, next up is the Eldritch Knight. So, here are the requirements in, in order to become this prestige class. Feats is a weapon for C Marshall and also able to cast third level arcane spells. Now, my advice is simple. Any melee classes like, for example, Fighter, Paladin, Ranger that has martial weapons plus a Sorcerer or a Wizard. Those two combinations fit the bill. Focus on Knit or Charisma till 20, then the rest to Strength. Other than that, the Eldritch Knight... Uh, has his plus one arcade spell casting level, which is a uh, pretty decent after level one They start to get a spell pile from either a sorcerer or a uh, wizard Other than that, it's not bad at all. It's a good mix between might and uh, magic. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, skip to the skills shall we? Yeah, and uh, the following skills is uh, al craft alchemy concentration craft armor craft weapons Let's see what else is on my uh, little uh, list Lore, parry, and spellcraft. I'm going to probably uh, say is, is uh, this class is uh, great for uh, removing cer certain arcane casters uh, buffs. If they have none, they just go in and buzz them with a weapon. Or they just uh, nuke a whole bunch of weak foes and then, uh, of course, melee them to uh, death. So let's get to the combat portion of the video. Now, let's uh, go ahead and talk about this uh, prestige class. Get the still spell feet and try to rush get all the automatic still spells. So this way you cast fully and play it 0 through on 9 spells. Uh, buff up before uh, combat. Uh, great idea to use uh, magic to uh, clear the room. Unless you're facing against some kind of powerful uh, arcane caster. Remove its protections. Then go all in with uh, melee of course. This is a uh, very nice might and magic uh, prestige class. If you know what you're doing. You can really excel in both departments. So let's get to the next prestige class, shall we? 
Next up is the Friends Berserker. So here are the requirements. Base attack bonus plus six. Any non-lawful alignment. Yeah, no paladins, folks. And the following feats goes. Power attack, cleave, and great cleave. And once that happens, you become a Friends Berserker. Best uh, class is Barbarians. Actually, non-lawful melee classes are all right for it. Focus definitely on strength and then get constitution up there second. High strength races are very good at this uh, prestige class. Now, uh, real quick about the uh, frenzy that you do. Stacks with uh, Barbarian Rage. Y activate it, plus uh, 6 to strength and minus 4 to AC. And then there's a penalty when it wears down, so be careful on that. Minus 2 strength, minus 2 dexterity, and minus 10 uh, movement penalty. You get enhancements in power attack. Also, uh, cleave uh, 2, and your frenzy improves. Now, you get toughness at level 1, so... That's a good idea to uh, wait for uh, that feat too. Now, following skills you uh, get is uh, Intimidate, Survival, and Parry. So let's uh, definitely uh, get to the next part of the uh, video, the combat portion. Now, as for combat, you're a frontline fighter. Hit that uh, frenzy up once you uh, do. Just uh, basically uh, go nuts. Since you do have superior cleave, yeah, you're going to do a lot of damage to a lot of foes. If you build your uh, character all uh, right, yeah, see so much of that cleave is definitely going off. I didn't have power attack. If I did, I would do a lot more uh, damage. Still, this is a wonderful uh, prestige class. I do mean so many builds definitely use this. And I'm going to say it right now. If you're in favor of a barbarian, stack 10 levels on this and you're going to do some really nasty DPS. Same thing with... Uh, Fighters too that are not lawful. So let's go ahead and get to the next prestige class in this guide. Now next up is the Harper Agent. So here are the requirements. Any non-evil alignment. Obviously diplomacy 8 ranks. Lore 4 and survival 2. Now alertness and iron will are the feats you uh, want. Any uh, spell uh, caster level to uh, level 1 you want. So that's like cleric, bard and what else. Oh, sorcerer, wizard etc. Advice I'm going to give is simple. Bard's the best bet because the uh, Bard Acknowledge and more other classes will work. Stats uh, based on your uh, basic class that you start out with before doing this uh, swap up. Now uh, they do get save throws, uh, ability that's like dominate animals, and also uh, Harper Knowledge stacks with Bardic Knowledge. And from level two, uh, 2 to uh, 5, they get to be able to cast spells. Yeah, this prestige class is not one of the best ones. I'll uh, say right now, unfortunately. Good news is it's only five levels. So if you like the Harpers, go ahead and do this for uh, five levels. Now, as far as the uh, skills day game, appraisal, bluff, craft alchemy, craft armor, craft trap, craft weapons, diplomacy, hide, listen, lore, move silently, perform, slay a hand, survival, taunt, and tumble. Okay, let's just get to the demonstration. Now, as for the Harper Agent combat, basically a uh, buff up as always. And if you uh, see animals you're facing, just use Dominate Animals and hope that uh, works. Other than that, this uh, prestige class, I'll probably say is if you decide to pick it, uh, go ahead and do one of the spellcasting ones like the bar and just uh, be like an off tank or something or uh, let your uh, tank do the work. Also, your wizards too. While you go in and just uh, mop up the uh, mess. So... I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do the next prestige class on the list. Next up on the list is the Hellfire Warlock. Here are the requirements. Intimidate to 6, Lord to 12, Spellcraft to 6, and you need the following uh, Warlock spells. Brimstone Blast or Health Rhyme Blast. Either one of those will do. You get both, that's uh, perfectly fine. Advice, Warlock oh, is the only way to go. I'm sorry, none of the other uh, classes really, unless you combine some of the others. Warning, this prestige class is only for three levels. However, it's very powerful. You get Hellfire Blast, you get to do extra damage with your Eldritch Blast. However, you take one point of constitution damage because Hellfire is really dangerous. You get some fire resistance, a nice Hellfire Shield to protect yourself. Now, uh, that's based off of your uh, Charisma too, And you get a very powerful summon. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, right now grab my notes and list the following skills you get. Concentration, Intimidate, Lore, Spellcraft, and Use Magical Device. This is an extremely powerful and also a dangerous prestige class. Good news is you get that constitution uh, back every time you rest up. So, let's do the combat demonstration. 
Now for the Hellfire Warlock, just play it like a normal Warlock. And just remember, every time you use the uh, Hellfire ability, you'll take one Constitution damage for each Eldritch Blast you uh, do. Good idea to send a tank in. And if it's a tough situation, go ahead and do so. Don't uh, do this all the time. Otherwise, you got to rest more often than you should not. Uh, that summon is actually uh, pretty good to uh, use uh, too. Other than that, this Prestige class, even though it's short, is really powerful. The uh, change off, you could just uh, manage by resting or uh, get uh, Constitution items. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the next one on the list. The next Prestige class is the Invisible Blade. So here are the requirements for it. Bluff rank 8. Feats you must have as combat expertise. You will need that for Fent. Yeah, it doesn't mention uh, that, but still you need uh, combat expertise in order to get Fent. Now you need Fent. Then you need two weapon fighting, uh, weapon focus, and a dagger or crit ghoul. And my advice is Rogue plus Shadow Dancer is the best result. Dexterity for stats. This is only for five levels. Uh, this prestige class has some more negatives and positives. Now this has bleeding wound, so if you hit a successful sneak attack, you get to make your foes bleed uh, two points of damage for three rounds. It increases uh, per level till it gets to uh, six points uh, per uh, round. Other than that, it's not that great. Well, there's unfettered defense. It's okay, but still, if you uh, want a better prestige class, look elsewhere. But uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about these skills. Now, the following skills that you get in this prestige class is bluff, craft alchemy, craft armor, craft weapon, craft traps, hide, listen, move silent, parry, perform, spot, and tumble. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to the combat demonstration of vi video where I play exactly like a rogue. So here we go. Now, as for combat for the Invisible Blade, just act like a rogue and do your sneak attacks. Now, problem with the uh, bleeding uh, ability on the Invisible Blade is simple. You got to have a dagger or a crickle. You don't have those, you can't do it. Number uh, two, if your foes are immune to sneak attacks, bleed damage won't go through. So, yeah, their main... Uh, we call ability that that makes them pop will not pop so I uh, definitely advise only getting this uh, prestige class if and only uh, if you're not facing any folks that are immune to uh, sneak attack so let's get to the next prestige class next up on the prestige class list is Neverwinter 9 so here are the requirements base tag bonus plus six now I'm playing the complete edition so the requirement for being a member of the Neverwinter 9 is wiped out if you do not have this expansion, you must go through the story in order to become a member of the Neverwinter 9. As for uh, classes that you should pair this with, fighters, paladins, or any other class or prestige classes are frontline fighters, aka tanks, like the Dwarven Defender. Now, as for uh, stats, just uh, make sure uh, you actually uh, build up like your uh, base classes. So, uh, as for its uh, abilities, it has a protective aurora, gives a... Uh, Aim by uh, in your party a plus two uh, save throws, effects and bonus to armor. And uh, guarding the Lord, that means uh, whoever is uh, guarded, they uh, take less damage. In other words, you're protecting them. After that, uh, they uh, run across the battlefield for an reaction, get bonus to uh, AC against the top opportunities attacks. And all out assault, what that does is, is uh, you uh, do maximum damage for three rounds. However, after that, you uh, take uh, 10 uh, damage. For a little bit because of the uh, incredible strength from doing those maximum damages. As for skills, concentration, craft alchemy, craft armor, craft traps, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, intimidate, listen, lore, search, spot, and parry. So let's just go ahead and uh, do a combat demonstration of this wonderful prestige class. Now this is a frontline tanking prestige class. So basically... You're uh, guarding the others, so if someone's in trouble, like a wizard or a cleric, for example, well, you uh, pop that one ability, they take less damage, which is uh, great. Now, I'm doing all out assault, I'm doing max damage with this uh, character, and I'm just really guarding people like crazy. So, this uh, prestige class is actually wonderful for uh, tanking, so if you need to uh, protect others, that's uh, great. The Aurora is very nice, too. Uh, bad news is it's uh, five levels, but after that you can focus on your uh, base class or other uh, prestige classes too. So let's get to the uh, next one. Next up is the Pale Master. It's back from Neverwinter Nights 1 with Undead Goodness. So here's the requirements. Any non-good alignment. 
and also able to cast third level arcane spells like a wizard or a sorcerer. Here's my advice. Even though it's an arcane prestige class, the feats itself is great for melee fighters. Yeah, like for example, fighters, barbarians, etc. Good ideal to get the still spell feat in case you want to cast some of the uh, arcane magic in, in it. Now, what you uh, get in this prestige class is a uh, ability to emanate undead, dark vision, deathless vigor, which gives you uh, fortitude saves, undead graft that could uh, paral uh, paralyze foes, some uh, nice uh, immunities like hold paralyzation. And stun. Also, best part is, is the uh, immunity to critical hits. Now, the uh, skills you uh, get is concentration, craft, tra um, alchemy, craft traps, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, hide, listen, lore, move silently, spellcraft. And after uh, the uh, first level of the Pellmaster, you start to get some spells per day, like your uh, previous arcane spell class. So, let's go ahead and demonstrate why this uh, prestige class is OP'd in this game, too. Now, as for combat, always prepare your arcane spells and uh, buff yourself up too. Since it's like also uh, to a degree a uh, arcane caster slash fighter, well, guess what? We're gonna go ahead and uh, fight. You can also uh, do is use a pet to distract while you go in, just take down some foes. Now, these uh, orcs thinking they could score a critical hit against me well, because of that immunity. Not today. That's right, everyone. No critical hits at all. Besides, my pet is causing havoc and chaos, which is great. This is actually a uh, wonderful prestige class. Really fun to play. If you don't mind being evil or uh, neutral, this is right for you. You just got to go through some feats and, uh, dec and decisions in order to uh, get the right combinations. Once you do, you're a real powerhouse. So let's get to the next one. Next up on the list, back from Neverwinter Nights 1, Red Dragon Disciple. Here are the requirements. You got to have uh, at least a level in Sorcerer or a Bard, 8 in Lore, and that's it. Once you get those two, you're a Red Dragon Disciple. Here's my advice. Bards, Fighters, Paladins, Berserkers, even Rangers, or any other melee or melee like uh, can benefit from the stat boost. Uh, this uh, Prestige class is a gateway to very high strength. Yeah, like for example, a Paladin plus Divine Champion could get that epic uh, Divine Might, which is great. Now, as for its abilities, it gets uh, 8 in, uh, of course, uh, Strength as it goes along to 10 levels, plus 2 Constitution, plus 2 Intelligence, plus 2 Charisma, some AC, and some very nice immunities like Sleep, uh, Perilous, and Fire, plus it gets Dark Vision, uh, ability to cast Sea Invisibility, and I do get uh, Blind Fight too, and a uh, uh, breath weapon which is good too and natural AC everyone now let me uh, go to the skills real quick that it gets concentration craft alchemy craft armor craft trap craft weapons diplomacy listen lore parry search spellcraft and spot let's just go ahead and demonstrate right now with a red dragon disciple with a divine champion and a paladin setup now as we are going into uh, combat since I have Epic Divine Might, thanks to the uh, high stats from High Charisma, and of course the Red Dragon Disciple eight, plus 8 in Strength I automatically gain, I get to do a lot more damage against the uh, Undead. Now, Fighters will uh, excel in this uh, to a certain setup. Yeah, probably one level in Bard or Sorcerer, Red Dragon Disciple, Weapon Master, and uh, Fighter. Same thing with Berserkers, Rangers, and even Bards itself. Makes them really OP'd. So other than that, if you know the perfect combinations with the Red Dragon Disciple, you get to really tear up the front line. So let's get to the next uh, prestige class. Next up is the Red Wizard of Thay. Yeah, that uh, group. So let's go ahead and talk about the requirements in order to come, become one of these uh, Red Wizards. Human only, everyone. Any non-good alignment. Yeah, that's right. You cannot be good for this prestige class. Spellcraft 8. Then the following feats you need is spell penetration, greater spell penetration, one meta magic or item creation feat. Uh, you got to be a specialist wizard in order to cast uh, level three spells. You cannot be a generalist. So, nope, you got to pick one of those. My advice about this prestige class, wizard all the way. That's right. No other choice. So you do gain an enhanced specialization upon being a red wizard. Specialization defense two. Your spell power increases. And you get some nice wizard bonus feats uh, too. 
The skills you will get is bluff, concentration, craft, alchemy, intimidate, lore, and spellcraft. So let's uh, just uh, go ahead and I'm going to say this right now. If you like enhancing your specialization, this is the prestige class for you. If you're not good, so the next part of the video will be combat. And here we go on that part. Now, as always, buff yourself up before going to combat. Send your uh, tank or melee people in to uh, do stuff for you. And then use your uh, specialization spells you're uh, really good at. Now, I'm um, evocation and specialization because I'm a red wizard. I get to really tear things up. So, here's my uh, spell right here. Me the meteor one. And boom. A whole bunch of lizard people, I believe they are, are dying. Yep, they're all about to uh, die anyway, so definitely uh, use your spells that you're specialized in. You get to do some really uh, great damage. If you could uh, miss being good, that is uh, perfect. You couple this with the uh, Arcane uh, Scholar class of uh, Candle Keep. That's another uh, combination too with a Wizard. Yeah, it's Wizard only, but still, it's a very good Prestige class. Let's get to the next one. Next up on the list is the Sacred Fist. So here are the requirements. Base attack bonus plus 4, lore 8, falling feats you need, improve unarmed strike, stunning fist, and combat casting, and also able to cast level 1 divine magic. I'm going to give advice to everybody on the best combination, monk plus any divine caster. Best way to go, actually I felt, was a cleric plus monk. So uh, you do uh, gain spell progression with the exception of level 4 and 8 to get new spells. In this prestige class, you move fast like a monk. Uh, you have a scarce fist code of conduct. If you use any weapons besides your fist, you take a penalty. Oh, that is right. You get some AC too and no armor or light. My advice is keep on the uh, no armor. You also uh, get sacred flames that will uh, have the uh, damage of fire and does some other nice things too. Uncanny dodge, inner armor, so give you a uh, plus uh, for bonus to AC and also some save throw spell resistance for... Uh, round equals on uh, your wisdom. So yeah, definitely get up that wisdom too. So that's why I said the cleric is the best route with the monk. Now the uh, skills that the sacred fist gets is concentration, heal, lore, spellcraft, and tumble. Let's go ahead and just do the uh, combat portion of the video. Now for the sacred fist, you could always buff up like a druid, a cleric, or any of those uh, high divine classes. With exception of paladin ranger, you just go on in. Uh, treat this as if you're a monk and to a degree, also a uh, cleric too, or slash art, uh, we call it divine caster. Now you can use some of their abilities too, like turn undead, which is uh, very nice. And my advice is this is a nice alternative to your basic cl uh, cleric plus uh, monk build or divine caster plus monk build. So it's a pretty decent one. If you like it, go ahead and go for it. Otherwise, I'd probably say it's maybe... Uh, Look for a better combination, so let's get to the next prestige class. Next up on the prestige class list is the Shadow Thief of Om. Here's the requirements. You need Bluff at 3, Hide at 8, Intimidate at 3, moves and Move Silently at 3. Uh, only feat you need to get is Stealthly, and if you do not have the Storm of Zir installed, you gotta be a member of the Shadow Thieves of Om, unfortunately. My only advice is, is uh, Rogue all the way for this. Get that dex up there. Any races with uh, dex is uh, great. In other words, something like a Drow or Halfling. Yeah, they're perfect members. Even humans uh, too. Now, the following uh, things they uh, definitely uh, do get is besides a uh, sneak attack is uh, Double Speak, which uh, gives uh, plus two to all bluffs and diplomacy uh, checks. Uh, at level three, they get reputation. It's a 10% discount from all merchants. Plus an additional plus two bonus to all bluff, intimidate, and diplomacy checks. They also get improvements to uh, uncanny dodge also. Unfortunately, it's five levels. However, they get a nice sneak attack bonus, which is one, three, and uh, five. Here's the following skills that they uh, definitely do get. Appraisal, bluff, craft alchemy, craft traps, craft weapons, diplomacy, disable device, intimidate, Listen, lore, move silently, open lock, parry, search, set traps, lay a hand, spot, taunt, t and uh, tumble. And those are ones that are not cross class. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration and I'll give my thoughts about this prestige class. Now, as for uh, combat, be a thief. Exactly. 
you have a sneak attack too, so yeah, that's my only advice about the Shadow Thieves of Arm. Other than that, if you decide to play this prestige class, go ahead and have a tank uh, go in for you. Then you just uh, take out uh, high price targets or high value targets, like for example, healers or uh, arcane casters. It's an okay prestige class. However, there is much better out there. If you like the uh, discount or the Shadow Thieves of Arm, or you pick them in Baldur's Gate 2 at some point, well, guess what? This is a good prestige class. Otherwise, I say pass for uh, better uh, rogue ones. Next up in the prestige class list is the Shadow Dancer. They're back from Neverwinter Nights 1. Even though their uh, Shadow Pets got hit with the nerf bat, but still, let's go ahead and talk about it. Here's the requirements for them. Move silently, 8, hide 10, and tumble 5. And you only need 2 feats after that. Dodge and mobility. Here's my advice. Rogues are perfect for this. You add fire to the mix. You got some cool DPS. Uh, dexterous races are really good. Like for example, halflings. And other than that, you take 1 or 10 levels. Yeah, it's uh, 1 or 10 for uh, this actually. Uh, level 1, you get high in plain sight. Then you get dark vision and uh, boost and evasion. Uncanny dodge. You get to summon a shadow. After that, you get your evade up big time. A defensive roll. And slippery mine. Which, uh, by the way, makes you uh, lucif and stuff. And saves versus enchantment spells or effects, which is uh, good. Their uh, skill set the Shadow Dancer get is uh, Bluff, Craft Traps, Diplomacy, Hide, Listen, Move Silently, Parry, Search, Slay a Hand, Spot, and Tumble. Yeah, definitely get Tumble. So let's uh, go ahead and do a combat demonstration of this prestige class. Now, for uh, combat, be a rogue exactly. Since I'm vested in all 10 levels in the Shadow Dancer, I get uh, bonuses and also it's uh, summonings too. So I definitely advise uh, going for uh, high value targets. Uh, if you're in a party situation, uh, definitely uh, send in your uh, tanks, including your fighter, etc. You go for the uh, kills. And if you want to, summon your uh, Shadow Creature just to off tank. And yeah, unfortunately, Hide in Plain Sight got hit with the Nerf Bat of 5 seconds. Now, in the original Neverwinter Nights, it was instant, in and out, and then you stealth again. It kind of broke the game in so many departments. This time, they balance it a little. Pet got nerfed too. But still, it's a great prestige class if you're going one level or ten. So, yeah, that's about it for uh, this. So, let's go ahead and do the uh, next one on the list. Now, next up on the list is the Storm Lord. So, here is how to become a Storm Lord. You must have 4, 2, plus 4 base saves, so every time you level up, eventually get that up there. Now, feature you need is toughness, great fortitude, weapon fo focus in a storm lord weapon, which is a spear, throwing axe, dart, or shuriken. So, spear is the only melee weapon and able to uh, cast level 3 divine magic 2. My advice is simple, favorite soul plus fighter, cleric plus fighter. Now, favorite soul, you gotta make sure you uh, pick the... Uh, Weapons that are uh, part of the deity that's required for a storm lord. So, for example, you gotta look for a deity that uses a spear. Other than that, just uh, go ahead and just build up that wisdom and then just get the strength up. Any of the wisdom plus strength combinations is uh, great. Uh, they get divine uh, spell casting uh, starting at level one, as if they were still in their class. They get enhanced weapons to the storm lord weapons, uh, electricity resistance that leads to immunity. And then they get Shock Burst Weapons, which is alright. And Ascendant Storm Avatar, which is much more powerful than a Druid. The uh, following skills that they uh, definitely uh, get is Concentration, Diplomacy, Intimidate, Lore, and Survival. So, I'm going to go ahead and do a combat demonstration and give my uh, thoughts about the Storm Lord. Now, as for uh, combat, always uh, buff yourself up, uh, depending on which uh, Divine class you're uh, in. Other than that, just start using your electric abilities. Now, that's the uh, great news is uh, that, and plus casting divine magic. Now, here is the uh, absolute terrible news, my friends. There are some enemies actually immune to electricity, so you get that, you're kind of screwed. So this prestige class is all right if you want some uh, pizzazz in it or uh, electricity to use as a weapon. Other than that, I'd probably say uh, look for, for uh, better prestige classes. So let's uh, go ahead and get the next one on the list. Next up on the list is the War Priest. So here are the requirements for this prestige class. 
Base attack bonus plus five. You must have diplomacy eight and spot five for your skills. Feet, only when you need is combat casting. And the last but not least, able to cast level four divine magic. My advice is the best way to go is clerics and druids or any other divine casters. Now, if any casters go beyond level four in divine magic, that is the perfect way to go. So here's what they do get. So besides remove fear from one to ten, they uh, get is uh, war glory, which uh, boosts up your allies hit to hit, and uh, also their saving throws. Enemies at the same time suffer some minus one uh, morale penalty to save throws, which is nice. They get inflamed, which uh, by the way grants his or her allies more uh, saving throws versus fear. Uh, mass cure, light wounds, fear aurora, battle tide, which is uh, spell like ability. Haste, mass heal, and there's an implacable foe, which uh, bestows all allies within 30 feet an extra 20 plus hit points. So this way they don't go down and die. So here's their uh, where it called their uh, class skills. That's not cross class concentration, craft alchemy. Craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, intimidate, lore, parry, spellcraft, and taunt. This is actually a good party favor uh, prestige class if you want all those nice buffs and more. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a combat demonstration. I'll give my thoughts also. As always, buff you and your party up. And when you get into combat, use those war priest auroras and more, especially those on the MD2. And my advice is uh, simple. The uh, War Priest is a great party uh, prestige class. In other words, if you need someone with buffs, that really helps out. This is a perfect way to go. Any of the Divine Casters are beyond level 4 is uh, great, actually. Paladin and uh, Ranger, if you want the uh, buffing power, that's alright. But there's other better uh, Divine uh, classes out there and other better setups, too. Other than that, just uh, be a party favorite in your party and you'll uh, do well with this prestige class so let's get to the last and final one which is the weapon master now next up is the weapon master yeah this prestige class back from neverwinter nights one here's the requirements base attack bonus plus five intimidate four dexterity 13 intelligence 13 because of these feats you need weapon focus and a melee weapon then you need dodge mobility Combat Expertise, Spring Attack, and Whirlwind. Once you do, do that, you're a Weapon Master. Best way to go is Melee Classes. They're great for that. The absolute uh, best class out of all of them is the Fire, since they can get those feats the quickest. Make sure you have at least 14 Intelligence, 14 Dex, and rest in the Strength. Any races with those combinations are uh, great. Enchant Weapons with Keen helps in this Prestige class too. Now, here's what they get is Kai Damage. Once per day, per level, Weapon Master chooses to make a special attack with his or her weapon. If this hits, automatically flicks maximum damage. Now, Weapon of Choice boosts their uh, weapon damage too. Increased Multiplier, which is good. Superior Weapon Focus, plus one their attack rolls. And Kai Critical drops the threat range. So instead of 19 through 20, now you get 17 through 20. That's why I said keen your weapon. So the following skills that they... Uh, do get is craft weapon intimidate lore parry and taunt this is a great prestige class let's go ahead and do some damage in combat now weapon masters are your frontline fighters so it depends on what you combine with you get to really do some nasty damage now i did a weapon master plus fighter put keen on the weapon i'll be critting more often now it depends on what weapons you have too you get to crit more often or not Still, this is a great prestige class to have. You get to do some serious damage in the front lines while your buddies are back there just slinging spells, arrows, or uh, divine magic. And that's about it for the Weapon Master. I'd probably say definitely invest in that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the last part of the video. It's the final advice. And here we go. Now, here's my final advice and uh, some final tips. Also... Now, you could do up to uh, four classes total in this uh, game to actually uh, make your character. Don't go too crazy on it. Even two is enough. Still, just uh, plan ahead on that. Yeah, I he you heard me right. Plan ahead on this. Know what race you're uh, going for. So, for example, if you're a fighter, you pick the uh, half-orc just to have more strength and then go for the weapon master. That's uh, fine, too. Same thing with a uh, drow wizard. Know your strengths and weaknesses of each of the uh, prestige classes you uh, pick. Other than that, just have fun and enjoy Neverwinter Nights 2. 
Well, everyone, this is it for my Neverwinter Nights 2 player prestige classes uh, guide. This is Lorfant signing off. Thank you for watching and have a great day or night. Please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you like what you see, then check out my suggestions on the upper left hand corner or YouTube suggestions of my video on the bottom left hand corner. Have a great day or night and please stay safe. Also, enjoy the view.